there's something about a tray that brings out the kid in all of us. I've been playing with trains since I was a little kid. I joined the Hawaiian Railway Society in 1985. I uh, came here on a vacation and found out that there was still a railroad here. I retired in 1998. I was a career police officer. Uh, moved here in 2001. Started volunteering here at the railroad. Um, they needed a new person to run the place. Back then they called it the administrator. I took that position and ran the railroad for several years. Ended up moving back to the mainland for old parents. Um, in between then and now I became a member of the board of directors. So I was still very actively involved even though I was on the mainland. And back in 2013 I was in a position to re-retire again from another police job and told the president that if they needed us to come back we would come back. Our plan was to come back next year. Uh, but he called me in March of 2014 and said I need you here and I need you here now. And so I re-retired and he called in March. I was here April 15th, 2014. I've been here since. I'm now, they now call it the operations manager. And my job is to oversee the daily operations and kind of make things work one way or another. My goals have been simple. I want liability to go down and I want public service or customer service to go up. The Hawaiian Railway Society is home to various locomotives and railroad cars from different eras in Hawaiian history. Each locomotive has its own unique personality and story to tell about how it served us and how it found its way to this three-acre property in Eva Beach. If you follow the embedded railroad tracks that cut across several roads in Eva Beach, it will lead you to 91-1001 Renton Road, the Hawaiian Railway Society. From the moment you enter the parking lot, you'll be greeted by two enduring pieces of Hawaiian Railroad history. First, the engine that started it all for the Oahu Railway, Kawila 6, and Eva 1, the first and last engine of the Eva Plantation. The office opens at 9 a.m. to prepare for that day's train ride. Train engineer and operations manager Steve Vend explains how it all started. That's the reason we formed, was to save Waco 6. That engine right there. Waco 6 was a locomotive from the Wailua Agricultural Company up on the North Shore. It has the distinction of being the only steam locomotive ever built on Oahu. It was built from spare parts in 1919. The mill used it. When the mill closed down, they kept it. They displayed it out in front of, out in front of the mill in the park. If you talk to older folks that lived up that way, they can, they'll remember playing on it. In fact, one of our volunteers remembers playing on it as a kid. Here is rare footage of the Wailua Sugar Company's last train ride. On this day, the Wailua Sugar Company retired all of its engines, including Waco 6. It stayed there until about 1970. 1970, there was an article in the paper that said they were going to scrap it because it had become rusty and it was a liability and all that kind of stuff. There were several people that were train fanatics on the island. They made contact with Wailua and made arrangements to save the locomotive. One of the people involved was a gentleman in the Navy named Captain Davies. He was a train guy and he also happened to be in charge of Lualuale Ammunition Depot. What's important about that is that's where the Navy had their train facilities because the Navy used these tracks from 47 until 68. Got permission to take Waco to Lualuale. Uh, after about three or four years, they restored it, made it operational, and it operated for about 10 years. Uh, and then it had some more boiler problems and we've never run it since. It was too expensive to rerun it. It sat out here in the train yard and has continued to deteriorate like it did once before. Last year I had them bring the locomotive in. 
we took it apart, we painted it, and made it a good representation of what we are. If you'll notice on my shirt, my hat, a lot of our stuff, the Hawaiian Railway has the picture of Waco 6. It's because that's what caused us to form. While Waco 6 will never run again, volunteers have creatively come up with a way to entertain visitors by simulating smoke bellowing from its smokestack with the help of a fog machine. 1865, Benjamin Franklin Dillingham was a sailor. He sailed here to Hawaii. It was his third trip. He was on a boat named the Whistler. He had a few days off, so he went horseback riding with his friends. He fell off the horse and broke his leg. Well, good for us, because he stayed behind when the boat sailed. After he stayed here, it didn't take long for him to fall in love with the islands, and he decided to make this his home. He met James Campbell. James Campbell had already bought 40,000 acres out here on the Evacoral Plain and wanted to do ranching and stuff like that out here. Dillingham also saw the possibility, but without water, that wasn't going to happen. A few years later, they drilled a well in Honouli'uli, just about three miles from here, and that was the first artesian well that was found out this way. Now that there was water, the possibility existed to do things out here. Back then, it took a whole day to come out here by horseback or walking or however you got out here. And Dillingham had the brilliant idea to build a railroad. In 1888, King Kalakaua signed a franchise granting Dillingham to build a railroad on the island. That got the ball rolling. The first train ran in 1889, and that locomotive is here on our property that ran the first train. Uh, by about 1895, 1898, tracks were already laid out here in Eva. The tracks behind us, the main line, those are the, those are the original tracks. That's where it ran. It ran all the way out to the Waianae Coast, up the Waianae Coast, around Kaina Point, all the way to Kahuku. There was a second line that also ran from Waipahu up to Wahiwa. The Oahu Railway was no different than any other railroad on the mainland. It was a common carrier. They called freight, passengers, you name it, they carried it. Uh, during World War II, the railroad was pressed into operations pretty much 24-7 and they hauled, I think, two million troops during the war around the island. Here is rare footage of a Wahoo Railway Engine 37 transporting sailors from Pearl Harbor to Honolulu during World War II. After World War II, trucks, buses, cars, roads became more popular and the, the railroad started to decline and Dillingham saw the writing on the wall and shut down all our operations uh, west of downtown. This stretch of track from Lualuale to Westlock stayed for the military to run ammunition trains, but the rest of the track on the North Shore and everywhere else is gone. <laughs> 